subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. It's always good to study on Joy Learning. And once again, we are on the senior high school. Ah, and I welcome you. Bogasam is my name. And I've been your geography facilitator. And this time around, you are going to look at another interesting topic in Form 1. And I believe for this topic, some of you may be asking so many questions, okay? And if you are fortunate to be with your parents, your parents may make the attempt to also explain certain things to you. And so parents, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up for being fans of geography. And so the very topic that we're going to look at is the rotation of the earth. The rotation of the earth. <laughs> and so I know the very first question is that, if the earth is indeed rotating, okay, if the earth is going round, how come that we those on the earth here, we don't seem to be spinning or going round? We don't see it. But always, uh, where your building is, that is where it is. You go to work and you come back, the, the position of the entrance is the same. It doesn't change. Yet, we keep claiming that the earth rotates. Is that okay? Let's see. As we move along with this lesson, I believe you have a deeper insight. And probably some of the questions that are bothering you will be answered. So once again, the topic is rotation of the earth. Now, our objectives. The very First one is to define rotation of the earth. What is it? Then the second one, you should be able to state the effects of rotation of the earth. Okay? What effects does the rotation of the earth bring? And then also explain the effects of uh, rotation of the earth. And so once you state the very effects then you go ahead to explain them the fourth objective is to use a suitable diagram to explain day and night and even for this one if you can remember when we're looking at eclipse i did show you one a sort of demonstrated one i did demonstrate one to you i must say all right and so let's make progress good the earth experiences two different movements. In other words, there are two main movements that the earth experiences. And this movement, the very first one, or say one of them, is rotation. Yawa, rotation. And then the second one is what? Revolution. When we talk of revolution, please don't think about anything. Just bring your attention here. And so, in fact, as far as this lesson is concerned, we are not going to tackle revolution. Because before we start with revolution, you must have the understanding of rotation. And then we build on. And by the time we are done, you really understand revolution. And so we are going to look at rotation so when we talk of rotation in itself what is it rotation refers to an object spinning motion an object spinning motion about its own axis an object spinning motion about its own word axis so when we say the axis what is the axis okay and when we say spinning spinning is the same as the word the rotation. Is that okay? So they are synonymous. Good. Now, earth rotation. So we are now coming to earth rotation. We, uh, we explain or say I explain rotation in general. When we say rotation, that is when an object spins on its word axis. 
So how about earth rotation? And so earth rotation, or so rotation of earth, refers to the movements or the spinning of the earth around its own axis. The spinning of the earth around its own word axis. The time that it takes for a planet or other celestial object to complete one spin around its axis is called rotation period. It's called rotation period. Don't forget that even the sun also what spins. Oh, don't you know that? The sun spins. It doesn't go anywhere. You know, it spins on its axis. It's at the same, it is stationary. But then it goes around at the same place. So the sun spins. So as the other subjects. But as to clockwise or anti-clockwise, as we move along, you're going to know. Now, the rate of Earth's rotation is expressed in degrees. The rate of Earth's rotation is expressed in degrees. Now, a period of one full turn or one full rotation is 360 degrees. Already I've said that rotation, the rate of rotation is expressed in what? In degrees. And one full turn or one full movement, okay? Or one full rotation is what? 360 degrees. In every 24 hours, in every 24 hours. So it means that every 24 hours, the earth makes a complete movement. As in where it started from, by, 20, by the 24th hour, it gets, it gets back to that same spot. And so it takes the earth 24 hours to complete its rotation. In other words, 360 degrees. And so if it takes the Earth 24 hours to make a complete movement or to make one full rotation, then can we calculate the, uh, say, what one hour will be in degrees or what, say, 15 degrees will be in hours? So hours to uh, 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 degrees and degrees to what? Two hours. And so in every 24 hours, with respect to the sun, called solar day. So the 24 hours is res with respect to the word, to the sun, called solar day. Now, we also have 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4 seconds. So it means we are left with just 3 minutes and 56 seconds to also make up to the, what, to the 24 hours, just like the solar day. And that one is with respect to distant stars called the side rail day or side rail period. Is that okay? In terms of the distant stars, of course, this tells you that the, st the stars that we are talking about are closer to the sun, uh, sorry, to the earth than the sun. And so the earth with respect to these stars, is able to make a complete rotation before a complete rotation when it comes to the sun. I hope that is clear. Now, this indicates the rates of rotation of about 15 degrees an hour. But as in the conversion, if 24 hours, then we get 360 degrees. Then, it is also true that when the earth makes a turn or when the earth turns within an angle of 15 degrees, it takes it what one hour. So 15 degrees equivalent to what one hour. Please follow this very well because uh, in our next episode or next lesson, we may be tackling calculation of time. And when it's time for calculating the time, 
If you don't understand or you don't get this concept, you may be finding yourself, uh, I mean, wo uh, 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 worried. Or say worrying, I must say. Or find yourself worrying. Now, um, so 15 degrees an hour. Then also, it is also uh, true, okay, that a degree, or say one degree, is equivalent to four minutes. One degree in four minutes. The speed of rotation is zero at the poles, okay? And I know you're asking me why. At the North Pole and then what? The South Pole. But about 1,600 kilometers per hour at the equator. Please, you have to be careful. There are some of the books that you guys have been using, and then uh, unfortunately, uh, it is quoted 16,890 kilometers at the equator. That is wrong. I want you to believe that it was a typo. So please uh, uh, pardon the author. But then, on Joy Learning, we'll give you a cogent information. Is that okay? So there's 1,600 kilometers per hour at the equator. You see, the speed. The speed, 1,600 kilometers. Uh, if you have been in the good books of the road and safety uh, uh, regulation in Ghana, when it comes to the interregional roads, you can the top speed that you can go is 80 kilometers per hour, with the exception of the motorway that you can go 100 kilometers per hour. Okay? And this one, we are talking about 1,600 kilometers. So you can imagine the speed that the Earth what, rotates at the equator. Okay? At the equator. Good. Now, so this means that the speed of Earth rotation varies with latitudes. I told you in our previous, I'll say on our previous slide, that at the poles, the speed is zero, okay? But at the equator, it is 1,600. So as one moves away from the equator towards the poles, either the north or the south, then you see that the speed will be, what, will be reducing. So it is not the same throughout, as far as the latitudes are concerned. Now, if the Earth makes a complete turn in approximately 24 hours, which make a day then can we conclude or can it be concluded that all places on earth experience 12 hours of dark each day mm -hmm. of course the 24 hours half is dark and half is what is day is that okay and so if it is 24 hours can we conclude that on any part of the earth, the darkness takes 12 hours, and that of the day also what takes 12 hours, and the answer is no. Why no? No, because during certain times of the year, we have more hours of daylight than at other times. That is true. So sometimes, ah, ah. It is already 6 o'clock. But it, night it has not even dawn. It is so, you can still see the daylight. It's like this time around, day is, is longer than night. We have been saying this. Hmm? Unless you are that young that you have not experienced this before. I hope as mommies and daddies, uncles and aunties are watching me, right? In, your comfort, in the comfort of your homes... Or your, say your comfort zone, you attest to what I'm saying. That at certain times within the year, we have a longer day. And then what? Shorter night. And so, you let's go. We'll have deeper understanding of this. Now, this happens due to the fact that the Earth's axis is not at a right angle. Okay? Meaning, the axis is not what, sometimes within it, it is not what, it's not straight. Okay? With the sun. It is tilted slightly at an angle of 23.5 20, degrees. Okay? Now, let me explain the axis. 
and then I'll go to my globe and demonstrate it to you for you to have deeper understanding of it. Now, when we talk of the axis here, what is it? The axis is the invisible. In fact, you cannot see with your naked eyes. It is the invisible or, in other words, the, it is the imaginary straight line, of course, through the center of the object, okay, around which the earth spins. The imaginary straight line around which the earth what, spins. Now, the ends of the axis are the North Pole and the South Pole, which refer to the point where the axis meets the planet's what, surface. Is that okay? So now, let's go to the globe. Let me demonstrate it for you to see. All right. And so I believe I've not turned it upside down. Good. I have my Pacific Ocean here. Is that okay? Uh -huh. There's North America. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. There's South America, I must say. Uh -huh. And then this globe this time around. Uh -huh. Then we have our Africa here. Is that okay? So, if the others is right is at right angle it means the earth will be rotating in fact when we talk of the rotation as i believe we can see the globe so this is rotating on its own word as is it is going around on its own as is it is going around all right but this time around it is not moving it is just going around and that is the word the rotation and when we talk of the axis on which the earth spins, we are talking of that straight line. And so if I should take my globe and show it to you, when you look at the center of it, you see some hole there, okay? Then this hole goes all the way to the down, from the North Pole to the South Pole. You can see, to the South Pole, okay? So this straight line from the North, from the north Pole to the South Pole is what we term as what the axis. And this axis is on which the earth word spins or the earth word rotates. Okay? Good. In fact, I must do the rotation where I must rotate it in this direction. And I'll, I'll explain. Is that okay? Good. And so, when the earth is not at right angle, what it means is that it will tilt. Is that okay? When the earth tilts like this, what is about the 23.5 degrees okay what it means is that the sun's rays part of the sun's rays will be received at the poles and even go beyond and i'll spend that one too okay to go beyond that's tilted and then the south some part of the south pole that was supposed to receive sunlight will also uh, now be receiving what darkness because the earth has what tilted is that okay <laughs> So that is the meaning of the tilting of the the axis. Good. So this happens due to the fact that the Earth's axis is not at a right angle. What was it? It's not at a right angle, meaning the axis is not what straight. Okay. Good with the sun it's not straight with the sun meaning it is what it is tilted it is tilted slightly at an angle of 23.5 degrees now when we talk of the axis what is the axis the axis is the invisible you cannot see or the imaginary we imagine imaginary straight line around which the earth spins Okay, around which the earth word spins. And the ends of the axis are the North Pole and the South Pole, which refer to the points where the axis meets the planet's what surface. Of course, when we talk of the planet here, we are talking of planet Earth. So let me go to my globe and try to do some, uh, some demonstration for you to get what I'm trying to say. And so where the axis meets the surface of the planet. It means right here. So here, as I have the globe like this, or say the Earth like this, that's right here on top here. That is my North Pole, where the axis 
meets the surface of the earth. And then down here is the what? The south pole, also meeting the surface of the earth at the down. And so when we talk of the axis, here you can see a hole in the globe, right from the north here to the south here, okay? In fact, it is a straight one from the north to the south. And that can be taken as a axis, okay? Good. So, if the earth is at right angle, what it means is that the earth will be that straight, and then it will be spinning. It will be going round. It will be rotating. Is that okay? So, the earth is rotating. Is that okay? Going round. As it is rotating, it is not going round any other thing again. And so, this is what we mean by what? Rotation of the earth. The spinning of the earth on its axis. Is that okay? Good. Now, if the earth is not at right angle and tilted, it means that it can tilt this way. Okay? If it tilts and then we have the sunlight, what it means is that we can have some amount of sunlight even beyond the North Pole. Previously, that it was at right angle. We will receive the sunlight, assuming the, the sun is, uh, sun's rays is coming from your source. Okay? We will be receiving the sunlight here. Okay? Uh -huh. So, where is Africa? Let me position uh, Africa. Uh -huh. So, like, uh, if you are in Ghana, Ghana, Ghana is here. We will be receiving the sunlight. Okay? But the moment the earth begins to tilt a bit, although we'll be receiving the sunlight, but gradually, night will be falling. Is that okay? And rather, we'll have some parts around the North Pole, which previously did not receive the sunlight, which will be receiving sunlight now. Is that okay? Good. So, let's continue with our slides, and I have some pictures to show you as well. Good. So, on your screen is the axis. You see, earth rotation. Can you see the direction? You know, the arrow is this way. From west, okay? From west hmm, to the east. From west to the east. So, this is what we call the axis. As in the form of a pole. Just to show that it is that straight. Passing through the, word, the center of the earth. So, this is the earth's axis. Okay? And we have the equator here. Then the Earth's rotation on Earth's axis. Good. Good. We have another axis. Good. So when you check this particular axis, you see that the axis is not straight. Hmm? It's not straight. Probably like this. It's not at right angles. So you get your 90 degrees. But then it is tilted. So this angle that is tilted... Is what uh, we, we, we see to be 23.5 degrees. Is that okay? So this is tilted. So let's continue where we have a sunlight. Then I can throw good. Let me throw more light on it here. Now, if the axis should have been straight, okay? Like it could have been straight this way. Then it means that as we have our sun here, this is the source of the sunlight. It means the whole of this place will be receiving the sunlight. As you can see uh, in the form of sea blue. So we have the division here telling you that previously the whole of this part is what? Receiving sunlight. Okay? When the axis should have been straight. This part should have been receiving sunlight. And in fact, this part should have been receiving darkness. But now that the axis is tilted, okay, it means that this part that previously received sunlight is now hiding from or has now moved away from the sunlight because of the tilting, okay? And rather, the, uh, the North Pole, the part that was not receiving sunlight is now what? Receiving sunlight, okay? So we have the sun never set. So then, the people living in the northern hemisphere, around this place, they will be saying, hey, so uh, it is already 6 o'clock, but then the sun is still on. But like uh, some time ago, it will be 6 o'clock, 
then it will be night, you see. And so these people here will be receiving longer day, and these people here will be receiving what? A uh, shorter day, okay? So whilst these people receive longer day, these people will be receiving what? Shorter uh, uh, nights. Is that okay? Good. So that is about the longer day and then the shorter night as a result of the tilting of the earth. Tilting of the earth rotating uh, 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 in line or say rotating into the sun's word light. Good. As a result of the tilt of Earth's axis, the amount of daylight varies throughout the year. So, the reason why we don't receive the same daylight all over the surface of the Earth throughout the year is that at certain times, the Earth will tilt. And once it tilts, some people will be experiencing longer day and shorter night, and vice versa. Then the least amount of variation occurs at the equator, while the most amount of variation occurs at the pole. So let's go back and see. Of course, when you check at the equator here, you know, the equator will pass through the middle here. Okay? So equal days and night. So those at the equator, all right, here, will be experiencing equal days and what equal night. But then those at the North Pole will be experiencing longer day. And those at the South Pole will be experiencing what? Shorter day. Is that okay? And then the opposite too is true. So, uh, we have the sunlight. That is the arrow throwing towards the Earth. So, this part of the Earth that has rotated into the sun's rays, that is what is receiving the, what? the sunlight, experiencing daytime. And then the other side behind the earth experiencing what darkness because they can't receive the sunlight. And so you see, sun never rises, as in these people experiencing longer nights. And so this part prolongs the night. And then the people keep complaining that, oh, the sun never rises. They have been sleeping, uh, of course, when they go to the other part of the world. Even during the night, man is still working. Man doesn't sleep. We need to work hard. Okay, so that is about that. Now, can you see on your screen that the earth is rotating? That is beautiful. This is an animation taken from Google. Very beautiful. You see the earth is rotating. Mm -hmm. It is rotating. So Africa will come very soon. This is Africa. Africa is going, 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 going. Africa again. So this is how come people keep asking. That ah, if indeed the earth is rotating this way. As I can see Africa going and then Africa coming back. Why is it that as we are on the surface of the earth, we don't also go around and then and come back? But then where our buildings are, they are still there. The position of the buildings, they are there. The flowers are still there. We go to work, we come, and then it's like nothing has changed. Do you know something? Let me take this paper. And then I try to put this, this a cover of a phone okay so now I have the paper and then the cover of the phone is on the paper okay as the paper moves okay and even negotiates and negotiates curves okay the cover of the phone is on the paper but then the position is still what the same <laughs> or you still don't get it. One thing about the rotation of the earth is that the rate at which the earth moves is steady. When I say steady, the rate is the same. So if indeed we shall feel the movement, that is when maybe one day, one day, the earth stops to what? To rotate. It's just like a car moving and then the driver applies the brake. Then it's like you go forward and what and come back. Is that okay? 
But if the car is moving at a steady speed or say at a steady rate without a driver applying the brakes, you see that you can even walk in the car. Sometimes you'll be moving around and this uh, young energetic guys on Kia trucks, okay? And then the car is moving all right, then they'll be moving in this Kia truck. You see? So the person is in the car. The car is moving at a top speed. Or say on a top speed, okay? But then, this person is still in the car at where he or she is. Unless he decides to move around the car. Just as you also have your burden there, then you, you decide to go to work and you come. So the earth is going around, as you can so see on your screen. And it's going around at a top speed. But then we don't feel it because it is steady. Now, uh, if you have ever been on a flight, say on a plane, okay, when the plane ascends, and then it gains the momentum, okay? The plane moves steadily. And those on board feel normal. Where you are sitting, the, the very seat that you are sitting on, that is where you are. Meanwhile, the plane is moving. Eh? And where you are facing, as you sitting on the seat, it is still like that. It has not changed. Meanwhile, the plane is moving. So as you are moving in the air, and someone else, a young boy on the surface of the earth, will look into the sky. So, oh, see the plane. The plane is going. So the plane is going to America. Okay? The plane is moving. The one outside the plane is seeing the plane what? Moving. Although you have the idea that the plane is moving because... You boarded it at a particular point, and you are going. But at that material moment that you are on board, you were sitting at the same place, and the plane is moving. But you don't move unless you decide to say go and then visit the washroom, and then you can walk gently on board. But if <laughs> there should be a situation whereby the pilot should just stop in the <laughs> in the in the in the in the sky or say in the air you see that you go into the washroom you just go back and forth then you fall down but because the plane is moving steadily you don't feel anything but it is indeed moving okay good let's make progress now it must be noted that the earth rotates eastward in other words, the earth rotates from west to east or rotates in an anti-clockwise anti direction. When viewed above the North Pole, so assuming you are on top of the North Pole, then of course, you must go into space before you can view. You must be like the astronauts. So once you're on top of the pole, then you could see the earth moving in an anti-clockwise direction. Is that okay? Good. When viewed from the pole, yeah, the earth rotates counterclockwise from west to east. And this is called prograde rotation. And what is prograde rotation? And do we have another rotation tree there so that we compare? Okay, let's continue. Due to this direction, we see the sun rising okay as in the from the west to east direction we see the sun rising every day in the east and setting in the west on the other hand if a planet spins in a clockwise direction just like venus and then also uranus it is said to have a retrograde rotation why should we say retrograde Retrograde to the sun, which is the largest star that it is going around. The, the sun moves in an anti-clockwise direction. And so if a planet that revolves around the sun moves in the opposite direction of that of the sun, that one is termed as what? Retrograde what? Rotation. 
Okay? In fact, Amas, uh, let me see, take my, let me take my eraser, okay? Yeah, so, I said, the sun moves in an anticlockwise direction, and this is it. Okay? And then, uh, like the uh, Venus and Uranus, they move in a clockwise direction. So once they move in opposite direction to that of the sun, we term that one as a retrograde word rotation. But then, the Earth also moves in the same direction, just like the sun. So if the sun is that big one here, and it's moving from west to east. And then we have the earth going around the sun, also moving from west to east. So you see that it will be meeting. This one is going this way. And of course, this one is also in the anticlockwise direction, but it will be meeting. So the sun's rays will be, will be uh, 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 reaching the surface of the earth. And so always we see the sun to be rising at the east here right on earth but of course the sun doesn't rise the sun is stationary okay that is how come i put the rising in uh, inverted commas and that of the setting that is the earth that rotates then we feel like the the sun moves from one place to the other no it is the earth is that okay good now let's look at the effects of rotation of the earth as the earth spins on its axis, what are some of the effects? Effects number one, day and night. We have day and night. It is because the earth keeps rotating. That is how come we have been experiencing day and night, as I showed you. But I think there will be another image to also deepen our understanding of that. Then, the effect number two. Rotation of the earth gives a difference of one hour between two meridians of 15 degrees apart. Then the third effect, rotation causes daily rising and falling of the sea level called tides. Is that okay? Good. Now, we also have the fourth effect to be the deflection of moving objects such as winds. An ocean word current. This one is just fresh in your mind, I guess, because we finished studying ocean current not too long ago. Ocean current to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. There's a rotation of the earth. And then we will be talking about the Coriolis force. Then also, dawn and twilight are also caused by the rotation of the earth. So, the third one is dawn and twilight. And the dawn and twilight are also caused by rotation of the earth. So, let's take them one after the other, then we try to expand. Or in other words, what? Explain. Good. Starting from the day and night. As the earth spins on its axis, only half of it faces the sun at any given moment or any given time. Because the earth rotates into the sun's rays, once the earth is oblate spheroid or a geoid, okay, in other words, spherical. At any given point in time, it is just half of the earth that receives sunlight. And the other side experiences what? Darkness. The side of the earth facing the sun experiences daylight, whilst the other end away from the sun experiences what? Darkness. Is that okay? Good. Good. We have another animation here on your screen. So it's like the, the, the sun is at the eastern side of it. And so 
any time any continent passes in front of the sun you see that portion of the continent receiving sunlight is that okay africa is gone south america north america the oceans also receive sunlight good so there's also another animation to aid your understanding of the rotation of the earth as far as day and night is concerned good now let's see we have the sun here okay shining and here is the case that the earth is rotating in fact you can see that it is being what tilted it is not at right angle i mean the axis is tilted and so this part okay from here this part of the earth facing the sun receives the sunlight but then realize that this part here that is the other part behind does not face the sun and so it doesn't receive any sunlight so then that part that doesn't receive the sunlight experiences what darkness and then those probably who are tired will be will be will be sleeping okay but those who also who have night shift will be working <laughs> okay so darkness then the part facing the sun receives, receives what sunlight so we have day here you can see the day and then we have what night here then you can see the direction of the movement of the earth as it rotates so from west to what to east is that okay good oh okay so it means we are done with day and night now let's look at another effect of rotation of the earth that is differences in time from one place to another at different longitudes you see if you have ever been uh, not traveling per se but if you are a fan of football then sometimes they'll be telling that oh they will be playing the afcon in nigeria but then in ghana we'll be watching it at say 3 p.m but in nigeria it will be 4 p.m why this difference in terms of the time all because nigeria is ahead of ghana by one hour okay so whilst we watch the match at 3 p.m they will be watching it at what at 4 p.m now let's go as earth rotates on its axis it moves about 15 degrees every 60 minutes in other words every one hour and for this one i took my time to explain that because the earth makes a complete rotation at 360 degrees okay within every 24 hours so if 360 to 24 hours then when you do the conversion you realize that whenever the earth turns every 15 degrees as in the angle it takes its one hour and one hour is also equivalent to what 60 minutes implying a difference so it moves about 15 degrees every 60 minutes implying a difference of one hour between two longitudes of 15 degrees apart and two hours between 30 degrees apart and so on an example is rwanda on the 30th meridian which is two hours ahead of ghana so assuming they are playing a football match in rwanda and ghanaians want to watch and if uh, according to the rwandans uh, 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 the match will be played at 4 p.m and then you are in ghana and then you're also waiting for p uh, 4 p.m to watch the match by the time you you on your tv and then tune your channel there oh they have already finished playing the match because your 4 p.m is not rwanda 4 p.m rwanda is ahead of ghana two hours so the moment they say 4 p.m in rwanda you must be by your tv at 2 p.m to watch the match concurrently okay good so that is about the difference and this rotation that brings about that we are done with the differences too and for the differences uh when we start learning calculation of time we start learning how to calculate time 
using the meridians or say the longitudes, that is where we'll be applying it most. Okay? Good. Now, another effect of the rotation of the earth is the daily rising and falling of the sea level. If you have ever been to the coast and carefully studying the sea, you realize that at a point in time, it is active uh, at certain portions of the sea, that amount of water is rising up. And then you may think there's a shark there that is trying to come out and then pushing the water up. No, there's no shark there. The sea is rising up because something is pulling it. Something is calling it into space. And that something is the gravitational force of the moon. And sometimes the sun. You see, when I throw this electronic pen into space, automatically it will come down. To come to the surface of the earth. Why? Because the earth acts like a magnet. Calling everything in space towards its surface. In the same brain, or say, in the same direction, the moon, which is the Earth's satellite, is also pulling the ocean water towards itself. So sometimes you see portions of the ocean, or say the sea, pulling uh, uh, up. Okay? That is the rising of the sea. Then also, the falling. So as it rises, of course, the moon cannot pull it out towards itself. The distance is that wide. It's just like a magnet that the tailors and then the seamstresses use, as I said the other time in our previous lesson. The magnet acts, also it is active within a certain radius. And so when the metallic object is out of that radius, in other words, not within the radius of the magnetic force, the magnet cannot attract the metallic object. And so you see that it's like the moon is struggling to pull the water. But like if the water is that close to the moon, you see that it can indeed pull it. But this one, it pulls it and leaves it. So it's the, the water, ocean water goes up and what? And comes down. It rises and what? And falls. And the rising and the falling of the ocean water is what we term as what? Tides. Okay. So although tides are mainly caused by the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun, rotation of the earth also plays a role in the periodic rise and fall of the sea level called tides. So we all accept, we all agree that the moon pulls the water, so as the sun. But when, as the earth also rotates, it, it also does that. It also performs such function. And so, of course, the earth rotation also brings about the daily rising and falling of the sea level, called what? Tides. Good. Now, how about the deflection of free moving objects like the winds and ocean current over the earth's surface? Rotation does that. So, let's read. The rotation of planet earth produces a force on all bodies moving relative to the earth, okay? This force is known as the Coriolis force. Coriolis force. And it is greatest at the poles and least at the equator because of the sphericity of the earth. So what work does this Coriolis force do? Okay? Good. The direction of Winds and ocean currents are deflected due to the Coriolis effects. Where the water moves to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere during Earth rotation. So as the Earth rotates, this force called Coriolis force, the work that it does is that it changes the directions of the winds and the ocean currents. So, in the north, it changes it to the right, as in the northern hemisphere. Then when you come to the southern hemisphere, it changes it to, what? to the left. In other words, it deflects it to the left in the southern hemisphere and deflects it to the right in the northern hemisphere. And it is the rotation of the earth that does that. Good. Now, dawn and twilight. Okay? Dawn and twilight. What are they? The brief period between sunlight 
and daylight. The brief period between sunlight and daylight is what is known as dawn. Whereas, okay, let me take my time and explain the dawn. So, dawn. So, normally, we take uh, the time, let's say, when it is around uh, 5, 5.30, then we deem it as what? Dawn. Because that is the period between sunlight and what? Daylight. Is that okay? Whereas twilight is the brief period between sunset and complete darkness. That's about, darkness is about falling. Okay? And then, uh, as if the, the darkness is coming, okay, and then you see some amount of light. That is what we call what? Twilight. And what causes that? These are as a result of earth rotation. When the earth receives diffused, you know diffusion, okay, at JHS level, diffusion and osmosis, don't forget. When the earth receives diffused or reflected light on the sun, while it is still below the horizon, and when we talk of horizon, you know, uh, let's say you can stand at a point and look at that far end. Where the earth seems to be meeting the sky. That is the horizon. Okay? So when the sunlight is diffused, then it gives off this twilight. And that is the period between sunset as the sun is what certain. And then complete what darkness. Do we have more effects? Oh no. Here we are with our trial questions. And so, of course, we have studied the rotation of the earth we define rotation okay and then we also demonstrated it using the globe and some google images and animation and then we have looked at the effects of rotation of the earth now let's see whether i will be able to answer these questions what is rotation of the earth i believe you can answer the spinning of the earth on its own word Houses. Very simple. Set the effect of Earth rotation. I talked about five of them. Day and night, differences in the time, talking of the dawn and twilight, deflection of winds and ocean current, and what have you. And I believe you'll be able to answer. Then also explain the effects of Earth's what? Rotation. Uh -huh. So these I mean, effects that you have stated, you should be able to what, explain them, the effects of rotation. Let's see whether we have more questions. Oh, once again, I thank you. I thank you. This is where time will allow us to end the lesson on the rotation of the earth. Right here on your favorite educational channel, Joy Learning. Once again, I am Boga Sam, and I have been your facilitator. Let's meet some other time. Bye-bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.